Hello everyone and welcome back to the series Mastering the Encosi System Engineering Handbook in preparation for the Encosi System Engineering Professional Exam. This is video number 22 on the topic of the measurement process, chapter 5-7. My name is Lance Sherry and I will be your guide for this video. As we've started off all the videos in the series, uh, we kind of motivate the idea for the System Engineering Handbook, and that is to provide a set of processes and activities to help manage the development of very complex systems that are developed in very complex life cycles. So to facilitate that, the uh, NCOSI System Engineering Handbook identifies 59 system engineering life cycle processes and activities and those 59 processes and activities are categorized into seven groups. This video covers the second last process in the technical management processes, chapter five, technical management processes, and this video is the measurement process. The technical management processes deal with the um, design, development, and execution of systems in the form of a project. The project is the unit of measurement that's used in which these systems are developed. And uh, within the technical management processes, there are eight processes that are used to uh, manage uh, projects. So the learning objectives for this video is what is the purpose of the measurement process? What are the outputs, inputs, and process activities of the measurement process? Um, the value of the measurement processes, and there are five of those approaches for measurement process. And then it makes a distinction between process-oriented measures and product-oriented measures. And within project, uh, uh, product-oriented measures, uh, three terms, MOEs, MOPs, KPPs, and TPMs. So to put things in context, a good project needs to be measured in order to manage the project effectively. And so the idea here is that by capturing information, measurements about the process, the project manager can communicate effectively throughout the project organization, identify and correct problems early, make key trade-offs, uh, project-related decisions that have to be made, track specific object objectives that may be critical to the success of the project, and then, of course, also importantly, defend and justify uh, decisions. As the uh, quality guru uh, uh, Deming had said, unless you have data, it's just an opinion. So uh, it's necessary to collect measurements uh, in order to uh, motivate and, and defend uh, decisions. So the system engineering handbook definition for the measurement process is to collect, analyze, and report objective data inf and information. And all of that is done to support effective management and demonstrate the quality of the product services and processes. So kind of a double-barreled uh, definition. First is to collect, analyze, and report the data. And that is done in order to support effective management. So in plain language, uh, the measurement process defines the information needed to support project management. Um, and specifically, that always comes in the form of time, cost, quality of the development process, and quality of the product. The uh, inputs, out activities, and outputs are shown in this diagram. On the input side, we need um, the measurement needs. What is it that project management is trying to uh, capture? And then the data for those needs. The uh, activity is to perform the measurement, and then the result is the measurement report. And, and again, it's important to distinguish between measurements for process and measurements for product. Process-oriented measures, uh, cost, schedule, and quality of the development process. Um, so those are traditional kind of system engineering measures, cost, schedule, and quality. And you would think that uh, the project management of the process would capture all of those. The SE Handbook makes a point of discussion about this idea of leading indicators. So leading indicators are things, measurements that provide a sense of what's about to happen next. 
So they might be in the form of trends or they might be in the form of proxies, but they provide ways of understanding what, what bad things could be happening within the project coming up soon. And they, um, in that sense, they provide project managers the way to be proactive with their actions and their interventions. So some of the examples of leading indicators are requirement stability and completeness, uh, interface definition stability and completeness, and then validating the requirements um, um, and how complete and consistent those requirements are. Um, so I, as you can see here, these leading indicators are all revolved around requirements definition because as you well know, um, getting the requirements right, getting the uncertainty out of the requirements is the most critical step in the process because any changes or defects that occur later on the process are much more expensive. So a, a lot of emphasis is put on leading indicators of how well the requirements are being defined and their stability and completeness. Switching over from process to product-oriented measures, and so now we're looking at the actual product that's being developed. There's kind of three tiers of, of levels. Um, the, the first is kind of the operational mission level, and that's measured in terms of measures of effectiveness. So you take your product, you um, put it out in the field, and you measure how well that product meets the operational mission requirements. Um, the second tier is measure of performance. This is typically a kind of lab type measurements. You put the system in the lab and under specific operational environmental conditions, you measure the physical and functional performance uh, to meet the, um, the requirements of the system. All right, so we've got the measures of effectiveness. Those are mission and operational objectives. The measures of performance are functional um, and physical measures of the performance of the system. And then the third tier is technical performance measures, TPMs. And these are typically done at a component or a subsystem level. And they show how the, the system meets the technical design requirements. Um, so the three levels, the operational uh, MOEs, the uh, performance, uh, the MOPs, and then the uh, design uh, the TPMs. The System Engineering Handbook also identifies something called key performance parameters. And the way it's defined in the handbook is these are related to the measures of effectiveness. And they're typically uh, you know, parameters that are very important to the product definition and or to the, uh, to the project. So just to kind of reinforce those three levels, there's a diagram in the System Engineering Handbook that shows the flow from measures of effectiveness, which are very operational and, uh, and lead to KPPs, uh, key performance parameters. Those flow down into measures of performance that are physical and functional measures. And in turn, those flow down into technical performance uh, measures of the uh, actual design and technical implementation of, of the requirements. So we're at the end of the quiz, and now's a chance to see what you know. Um, so this is a good time to uh, pause the video and kind of jot down answers to these questions. And then once you've done that, you can uh, release, unpause the video, and go to the next slide to see the answers. So again, pause the video to check your answers. So thank you so much for uh, going through this video. Um, this is, the video is on the measurement process. The next video in the series is the quality assurance process. And we'd be grateful if you could click the thumbs up. Thank you very much.